Hi, it's Ivy Slater and welcome to Slater Success Live. Today I have the pleasure and honor of interviewing Amy Anderson. Amy is the CFO, the CEO of Price Turner CFO. Um, C Price Turner is this company that um, Amy leads along with her team and they delve into clients' daily operations, partnering with CFOs to discover what is working and what isn't. Her team members always work in this, with the same clients, building trust, forging relationships, provide consistency and an investment in their success. Um, she covers a diverse portfolio with three decades of expertise. She uses her financial knowledge to customize Fortune 100 accounting and operational principles to fit the needs of the small to mid-sized businesses. Amy, thank you for joining me today and come on in. Thank you so much, Ivy. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor to be with you. So um, let's, you know, let's delve in a little bit. Give us a little bit of how did Price Turner get started? What drove you to start a CFO company and a CFO company that's a virtual CFO company or off-premise CFO company? So after being in the corporate world for many years, when I left that, it was kind of figuring out what I had to do. And I went a number of different ways. I'm now in my 10th year as my in my business. And I also have employees with previously, I may have had the um, contractors working with me. My company- well, the, the business really has grown and developed over that time. It has grown so much. And in fact, it grew last year during the pandemic while um, many others were not able to survive. And mine did primarily because I was helping people. So, so let's look at that for a second. Um, in the past year, in the past year, year and a half, right? The pan pandemic comes on mid-March. I know um, you're, you know, working with how many clients on average? Uh, now about, now it's at uh, 100. It had okay, been but, prior. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, and everybody who wants to do the math, like Amy does, you can now do the percentages in growth in the last year plus. Um, in, in looking at this, right? So the pandemic comes on in March of 2020. I know there was a lot of scarce, a, a lot of talk about scarcity, concern about business. Um, and then there was the word around the PPP. What were your actions and how did you navigate this for your clients? Well, first of all, let me specify that I am a CPA. However, okay. I do not do income taxes. I work with the business owners. So as the PPP came in and as I saw my own clients just kind of going, okay, what now? And everyone in the world was saying, what now? I read up on everything I could. So from the CPA perspective, I knew what was going on because of the insights from the tax area, from the accounting area, from the business. So I knew there was going to be something. And when the PPP came out, which does stand for Paycheck Protection Program, it also is changing because it started out being just for those people who had employees and, and not considering the self-employed people. And then they realized that 85% of the U.S. market is self-employed people. So they realized they had to do something there as well. So between all those changes, I was keeping up with that. And then by educating myself, I then turned and educated anybody else who had a business. And so I could see your evening reading and my evening reading might have been very different during that time. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And believe me, I'm not sure how much sleep I had during that time either, because one night it was the one day with 17 different Zoom calls because wow. everything had to be virtual. Right? right. So I'm teaching everybody what to do, how to fill out the forms, that there was a way to navigate, that maybe they could get unemployment. Maybe they could get the PPP. Maybe they could get the EIDL, which was another loan that the government was giving. And being able to be that resource for them to say, yes, there is financial availability of directly from the federal government, directly from counties. Many of the counties decided to take money from the federal government or money that they had and give that to businesses as well to keep them all afloat. And that was the important thing was everyone had to stay afloat 
and not let other people go because well, if you let people go, that was the against the purpose of the PPP. Right. And then you have the trickle down effect as you let people go. And the impact of the trickle down effect is a direct impact on the economy overall. Yes, exactly. And so by having people on board still, keeping the people as employees, number one, they felt a need. And what were they all doing was, with the exception of many of the essential workers, and seriously, the essentials workers did so much and they continue to do so much. They are really the honorees here. The other people, though, all had to work from home. So it was, how do you do that? So that was the other area where I helped my clients with designing processes where, oh, wait a minute, we used to have paper. How do we do this now? And well, I, I, I'm going to chime in, and I know Amy, a long time listeners, um, and feel free to you know give some feedback, ask any questions of Amy and myself as we're talking about the impact of um, a CFO in a growing company, a, a strong company, and the financial piece as companies grow in scale, which we're going to be getting into in a moment. Um, but I, I, and I know Amy a long time, I will say Amy is the tech person that I know. You know, if I have that, that tech question, there's a select few I could pick up the phone and Amy's one of them. So when she's talking about systems and processes and, and how to be virtual and all of that, uh, it's one of the resources I use because I'm not the tech wizard. Absolutely. And there are times, and we always say, you know, do what you do best and outsource the rest. So Absolutely. Do from, what you do best and outsource the rest. I love that. So, you know, as the CFO role, which is what we were, again, I am a tech person. I also, I've had systems forever. So for me, we, my company had always been virtual. So when we turned to the pandemic, life didn't change for us. It did change for many of our clients because they were not used to dealing with their own people virtually. Now, on the other hand, there are areas that you want, like for example, my company, we implemented Teams this year. That was a huge step for us as my company was growing. And I know systems, like I said, but I wanted an expert to implement that. Similarly, if you're an expert in your business and you're selling product, you're selling service, you want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing the numbers, especially during the pandemic when people were all home. The last thing they want to do is do their work, do their work, go downstairs to their family and go, oh, yeah, right. I got to go back upstairs and do my numbers. And it just makes for a lot of people to suddenly say, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Let me get the expert to do it. So I want to chime in here for a second because, you know, many people who might be listening here right now saying, well, my company isn't at a beginner stage anymore. You know, we so let's talk about there. There's small, there's early stage companies, there's small companies and there's mid-sized companies. Where does Price Turner fit in? We fit in that mid-sized company. Revenues. Five hundred thousand, a million dollars, up to twenty-five, fifty million dollars. Often, that value is actually how many widgets you're selling, and for what dollar. You might be. Oh, let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> how many widgets you're selling, and for what dollar? Where does where does our CFOs come in on that? On the on these pieces, and what's the impact? The CFO needs to be involved. Almost as soon as you hit a hundred thousand dollars, there needs to be a different person than the owner doing the, doing the books and records. And the reason is you can get trapped thinking you know what you're doing, and you don't. I have a client who asked me to just look at the books after I did, had done a presentation, and as I looked at them, yes, she had reconciled her bank account. She thought everything was fine. She double counted her receipts and her deposits. So what happened was for the past three years, she had overstated the income to the tax people. Which, which means for the layman here, you're paying double the amount of tax or close to it, then you need to. Not that we don't wanna give the government our fair share, but we'd like to keep it at our fair share. 
And especially when that was not correct either. Correct. Now, the wonderful thing was I was able to step in, correct her financials, and it was in time for her tax preparer. Remember, I don't do income taxes, but I know enough about them that the refund that came in from the IRS more than paid for both of our payments. So nice. it was a well review that was done. Now, when you are over that 100000 you're selling a lot of widgets. You've got to make sure that they are accounted for properly. You've got to make sure that your employees are being paid properly. That you're, if you've got contractors, they are, are being treated like contractors, not as employees. You've got to make sure there are certain conditions that you are meeting. Are you paying for health insurance? Are you not? Do you want to grow? How much does a person cost? All of those calculations come into play when you have a growing company and you and a person as a business owner is an expert in a certain area, but they not, may not be an expert in those financials. That's where CFO comes into play. So is there a specific, you know, uh, we always in, in the world of growing and expanding, there's always a lot of talk about niche. Um, and when you look at businesses from here to here, is there areas, you know, is, is it healthcare? Is it real estate? Is it service-based businesses? Is it, are there specific areas that are Price Turner specialties? There are not because the accounting for various industries is relatively the same. It really, there are differences absolutely and that's why it's also why their regulation put out by the accounting um regulatory areas the again it's the number of widgets and what the dollar amount is and you look at that there are some areas restaurants for example that is a fast-paced dollars in cash in and point of sale area I have some of those. I have the construction business. I have the um, chiropractors and the acupuncturists. I have doctor's offices. I have service base. I have lawyers. I have consultants. It's accounting. That's the one, one thing. Now, I will say, I keep to the U.S. So I don't do the accounting for European countries. I have interfacing with European. I've interfaced with Canada but it's not directly where that business is located because accounting rules there may not may they do differ than in the u.s so what have been some of the things that helped your business grow in the last 10 years in the last year communication um let me rephrase that connections that's the word i want to use connections i'm a um, extrovert if you hadn't figured that out by now i will talk to anybody and i have one of my very first clients before i got totally into business i was trying to figure out what i was going to do i met walking in a dog park we both had dogs that was our commonality turned out she had a nonprofit. she had a system for accounting that she didn't understand I happened to mention that I was looking for a job or starting my company, didn't know what I was doing. And she's like, do you know QuickBooks? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Didn't know it at the time, but, you know, was able, I knew other systems. I knew many other accounting systems. It was just an accounting system. Again, to me, systems are easy. So I helped her out. That led to her referring me to somebody else, to somebody else. The connections that one makes may lead to directly to a client it may also just form a relationship that they will become your client they will refer you to a client i refer them those connections are what really makes a business grow and nowadays with it again post pandemic or during the pandemic all those virtual networking that i've done have continued dramatically 
-hmm. And uh, so I was just awarded, in fact, the Growing Business of the Year by the Mainline Chamber of Commerce. Woohoo! Nice job. Congratulations. Thank you. And again, why? Because it's connections. I feel the connections that you make. If you're in a couple of specific networking groups, Take the time and be active in those groups. Don't try to spread yourself too thin and go here, go there, go there. Give a business card, or in this case, a virtual business card. Make sure that you get to know the people. And don't do it at the event. Take the time to do it after the event and get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. You know, one of the things I always say and, and work with my clients on is don't over-network. You know, network... Hunker down in a couple of great groups, groups mm -hmm. that align with you. Mm -hmm. And when you register for that event, carve out a couple of times in your calendar right then and there to actually create the follow-up right then and there. So ah. meet, so truly deepen those relationships. Don't just kind of, I'll do like the networking cruise, you know, the, the, the flyby, <laughs> the cruise through, um, pass out a few things versus truly showing up, developing really great relationships and having those one-on-ones. And I open my calendar up specifically before, when I register, I have to make sure that I can meet with people. If not, why am I showing up? Right. Yeah, that, that's a whole point. And, and this is one, again, one of the finance areas. When I'm looking at a client's um, accounting, I look at where are they spending money on? And if I see that they spent money on this one networking event to join the group, and then they never went to another event. Now, sometimes, for example, like a mainline chamber, there are going to be businesses that join because it's a local mainline, uh, because mm -hmm. it's a local chamber. That's great. And then there are ones that, like you said, they just cruise it. So I join this, I join this, I join this, and then they never go. It's like, okay, why are you doing that? Now, I know someone who during the uh, pandemic and all the networking events were virtual, he literally would spend the time, he's a great networker, and he would spend the time and set up the t those calls using the chat function of yeah. Zoom. And right then and there, he had them all set up for, you know, okay, good. It's six of them already planned by the time the, the one hour networking uh, event was done. Absolutely. You have to do you're doing networking correctly, you have to follow up. So listeners, um, if anybody wants to chime in with any comments or questions, and if you're watching this virtually, please continue to post any comments or questions. Amy and I will be going back to the video in the next week and more to chime in and respond. Um, looking, looking forward, so what is your vision? Like, What's next for you? Where, where are you going with this? Well, there are a couple of opportunities that come up have come up recently. Um, as I said, I now have 10 employees, a couple of contractors because they want it that way, and that's okay. Uh, I've got over 10 employees. I've got over 100 clients. My team is continuing to grow. I have another CFO. I have a finance manager. I'm looking for a couple more people in those roles as my clients continue to grow as well. I almost could work myself out of a job where the client is growing so much, they need now a full-time CFO, not just a part-time CFO. And that's okay with me. That's a success statement for me, that the company is growing so much that they need that. Now, nice. I will transition for that, and I will also hire for that, too. I'll be making sure that the person is qualified. The other thing, though, that might happen is there might be some acquisitions as well, which is another interesting area where there might be some people, the, the baby boomers are, you know, adjusting to what's next in their lives. And there are a number of accounting companies that have, uh, have decided they're not going to continue, but they need someone to continue on their half. Mm. So that's a possibility. But for now, it's just um, continue to grow. Again, I speak to everyone. So, there are so many. I think I heard a statistic. There are 90,000 small to medium-sized businesses in the Philadelphia area. That's wow. in Philadelphia. 
Again, and you, you, you're virtual. So what the spans of your clients are? The entire United States. Absolutely. So if they're just 90 in Philadelphia, I can see the potential across the United States. I got and it. And we're available. So we've got so a great team of people. Tara's jumping in and she's asking, what is your best advice on budgeting and planning for growth while we're still living in a pretty uncertain time? Great question. Great question. And I have a number of clients who are struggling, for example, in these uncertain times with supply chain. You uh, all yeah. know the Suez Canal. Uh, recently, this client was affected by the forest fires. In Canada, no less, because it affected the trains going across Canada. Yeah. And th every, there's going to be something. There's always going to be something to prepare for from a budgeting and forecasting perspective. If you have recurring revenue, consider that and consider what you've got. See if, there, if that's not going to continue or if you are working on the pipeline all the time, where is your pipeline? Budget and forecast for what you know, and then give yourself some growth as well. I, I love what you're saying, because I love how you're also bringing in the pipeline. Because I think very often people don't look at that in the, the, you look at it as you must know your pipeline. On the other hand, when you're looking at budgeting and planning forward, I was actually just talking to somebody yesterday and he was saying, you know, my pipeline is similar to a straw. It's pretty, you go, it's, it's powerful, but it's narrow and thin. And I was like, how does that affect your business? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want? Do you want it to change? What are you doing about it? The typical IP questions. Um, and the pipeline and the impact is, is a good portion, especially when you're planning, because if in your budgeting, if you pipe, want your pipeline to grow, something has to be invested in, whether it's time or money or both. Exactly. So you've got to invest and you've got, back to the budget and the forecast, you've got to have the expenses in there. You've got to invest in your business in order to make business. That's another long time saying, got to spend money to make money, right? And and you know what, I want to jump in here because so often we think, you know, CFOs, CPAs, the conservative, non risk people in the world. Me? Um, but then I know Amy, and you, you, that doesn't fit your profile. <laughs> no. It, it's but, more realistic than that. And it's also that you're in a business. Why? Have fun with it. If you're not having that passion, if you're not having fun, why are you in that business? A woman after my own heart. You want to share on, on, on a personal note. So as I said, many people think of CPAs, CFOs as the conservatives, as the non-risk takers, as the people who caution. Um, Amy, in building this company, and as you have in the last 10 years, obviously you've taken some risks. Obviously you've lived a little bit out of your comfort zone, if not on a regular basis. Um, and in doing that, you've done some other crazy things. Want to share a couple? <laughs> sure. So this is something where I tell people, and it's one of those, okay, first of all, you did what? And then they hear I'm a CPA, and then it's like, whatever made you do that? And the answer is, why not? Life is too short to just you know, sit in a bubble like we've all done this past year, right? So prior to this year, though, I did decide to do um, a tripped up to Canada in, uh, actually it was six different times I went there, which was to go dog sledding. And I'm not saying where I sit in the sled and somebody's behind me driving the sled. This was totally immersion dog sledding where I'm responsible for six dogs with everything involved in them, including the winter camping with them. This was three days, oh, two gosh. nights, winter camping, in Canada, at one point it was 33 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm talking Fahrenheit. At another trip, it was negative 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Give me a Marriott, a Hyatt, a Hilton, uh, any uh, Ritz car, any day of the week. No, no, there was no. Um, we did have a, a tent to sleep in. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other fun thing that I did, you mentioned about building the building. 
I mean, building my business. So um, two times I repelled down the building. And the first time- like, How many stories? 31 a, stories. Like I could, like a six story, like like one of those walls that, um, that's in a game park is my vision. Well, yeah, that was the practice we did while we were up on the roof. Yeah, they literally had us hanging down about one story and kind of go, okay, this is what it's going to feel like. Oh, oh okay, this is great. And then we what? went to the real thing. And it was 31 stories down. Wow. So Mick, Mick Collins, hey Mick, thanks for joining us here today. He's saying, well done, ladies. Thank you for joining us today, Mick. It's good to see you. Always a, a pleasure to chop, chop, uh, have you jump in and chat. Um, uh, before we close this out, let's just throw it out there as Amy and I start to wind down. If any last minute comments or questions, I always, my biggest question, I will always say at this point, out of joining in and listening today, what have you taken away from this conversation and what are you going to do about it? What implementation, you know, as business leaders, it's always great to educate and watch. And I, I thank everybody for joining in. My biggest impact is if you're showing up to listen, what did you learn? What did you take away? And what are you going to do about it? What are you going to be implementing? Mm -hmm. Amy, what do you see in your next steps for Price Term Turner as far as the rest of this year in 2022? Any specific things as far as what you're see doing for your clients? The PPP is still out there. People were able to get round one of the PPP and that is now pretty much do. So if you have not already asked uh, the government for forgiveness, get that in, because if you don't do that, you're going to have to start paying the interest on that. The other is round two, which became available in the February, March time. So count out 10 months, it will be due at that point. So realize that there is time to utilize these funds but you want to apply for forgiveness because otherwise it turns into a loan. And though it's a low interest for loan, you don't need to do that. The other thing is- And so I'm gonna actually jump in here for a second. So listeners, when Amy said 10 months, that means you mark your calendar at eight months and you reach out to your CFOs, your CPAs, your support teams and or Price Turner to make sure that you're getting the guidance on how to apply for forgiveness properly, easily and effectively. Mark your calendars. It's my calendaring tip for the day. And I'm going to just specif specify to what date that is. And that is the date 24 weeks after the date you receive the funds. So if you do the 24 weeks plus the 10 months, and now as Ivy said, to make sure you prepare for it, 24 weeks after the date you received it and minus and plus eight months only. So that's a big thing. Again, the EIDL is another thing which has happened where people businesses were able to get money. There's still money available. There's also anybody with a restaurant or the hospitality. Yeah. There are specific grants. A lot of the small um, um, economic development centers for the counties also have grants available. If you need money, go out there. There are a lot of businesses that need money still. Look into that, do the research, and see if you qualify. Lovely. Mick chimed back in. He said he, uh, his takeaway of today is re reinforce the idea of investing in my, this, in my business, in myself. Absolutely. I condone both. Amy, how can our listeners learn more about you? The company name is Price Turner CFOs. So look that up on the website. There's also a link to schedule a time to be able to just talk one-on-one, uh, -on -one, virtually, of course. And if you want to see the videos of me dog sledding or going down those buildings, those are also available under the About Amy. So. Yeah. Uh, pretty, it, you know, what fascinating, fascinates me, and I think one of the reasons that um, it's been great to watch you grow and succeed is you break the rule, you break the rules of traditional knowledge. You don't stay in a box. And that's one of the things I admire about the company you run. Um, meaning CFOs, CFOs and CPAs aren't risk takers. And then Amy, you know, spoke to her a bunch of years ago. She goes, oh yeah, I can't talk to you next week. I'm off dog sledding in Canada. 
said, do you know it's below zero in Canada? And she's like, yeah, I'm packing layers. I'm like, that wouldn't be my answer. My answer would be to go south. Uh, so thank you for joining me here today. Listeners, you can continue to watch the video um, on Slater Success uh, under Ivy Slater and Slater Success on LinkedIn. Please continue to feel free and chime in on your takeaways and what are you going to implement about this? Continue to join us. We'll be back probably in August with more Slater Success Live. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the fun. As in Amy and I both agree, build a business that brings you joy, fulfillment, and it will grow as you take action. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ivy. Listeners, stay tuned as more, more great episodes of Slater Success Live comes. With, uh, we have a LinkedIn Live trainer coming on in a few weeks. Beth Granger, Beth and I have done a couple of LinkedIn Lives on various topics and we'll continue to pop in together. It always makes great impact. Stay tuned, leave your takeaways. I'll see you next time.